Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Hecker, functional medicine chiropractic physician and specialist in histamine intolerance. So today we're going to go over histamine and a little bit more specifics about it to give you an introduction into histamine. And maybe you'll pick up something new that you haven't already known or all of this is new. Let me share my screen and we'll go into a nice presentation with pictures today. All right, so this is really a hidden cause of I don't feel good. Um, many patients who find themselves diagnosed or being diagnosing themselves with histamine issues or histamine intolerance, um, they've been to different, different specialties, different physicians, different providers, and there's different systems that are affected in the body. So it looks at many different types of systems here. So these are some of the symptoms that one may have an experience with histamine intolerance issues. Hives, itchy skin, flush skin, red eyes, facial swelling, nose running, not just in seasonal times, but maybe like long term, or maybe when you go in a different building um, that you find that you have that response. Congestion, uh, the headaches that go on, fatigue, digestive issues, sleep problems, inconsistent sleep, circadian rhythm dis dysfunction with that mood issues, just really unexplained symptoms that are just do not match with anything. And the thing is that this can be related to excess histamine. And it's really more common than most people think. And it's something that I found that many people in my practice, I would say like 80% are suffering with histamine intolerance and they don't even realize it. So what is histamine? Okay, it is a chemically naturally it's produced in the body as part of a normal immune response that the environment will trigger. Um, it performs several important functions, but it can become problematic when it is overproduced or builds up in the body. So it's a normal process. We need it, but sometimes it goes haywire and it goes nuts. And we have way too much of it. Excess histamine and associated inflammation occur when the immune system is chronically activated or overreacts in response to certain substances or triggers that may be there. So these things on the left-hand side of that blue circle like pet dander, ragweed, food proteins, dust, pollen, latex, these can trigger a histamine inflammatory response. And I think histamine gets its biggest um, popularity uh, contest when, when you look on TV and you see the fields of, of dander and uh, dust, pollen, like Benadryl, stuff like that. You might find that, oh, histamine, you think in terms of seasonal allergies that are going on like that. Different things can trigger it to a person that does not feel good. So what happens when your histamine load becomes too high? Well, lots of things can happen when it comes too high. With continuous exposure to those triggers, histamine begins to build up in the body, kind of similar how water builds up and fills up a bucket, especially if it doesn't stop raining outside. So once the bucket's full, it's just spilling over. As the body exceeds its capacity to handle that histamine, you, that's when you get the symptoms with it. So this handout over here on the right-hand side of the page is a nice visual image of the histamine bucket that we might work, that we might see. Now, we're going to go into this a little bit more in detail with this image here. But, man, when we're going to expose to it, we have that response. Now, we're all built with different size buckets. And sometimes the buckets have holes in them because of our genetics. And we need, and sometimes <laughs> there's dirt already in the bottom of the bucket, so it makes the bucket appear smaller because of our genetics. So there's little, some things, little tweaks going on that can really affect how our bodies respond to histamine um, in addition to so many different things. All right, so let's look at this. Let's break this down, right? There are many contributing factors within your environment adding to the histamine load in your body. So we're going to go through some of these big ones here. Dust, pollen. These are the airborne irritants that really, really irritate most, a lot of us, a lot of, um, during the seasonal, during spring and fall. That's when we have trees are blooming, lots of pollen. Bam, that's going to start just filling up that, that bucket. Then we go down and we see, okay, certain medications, including antibiotics, painkillers, um, antidepressants, and even some antihistamines. They actually break down, uh, the break, they inhibit the breakdown of histamine, causing it to build up. So medications can also add to that list. There's certain ones out there that can do that. Over time, 
physical and emotional stresses can trigger histamine release. And you might find that, oh, wow, when I get really stressed out, man, I'm having a diarrhea episode. Or, wow, when I get stressed out, I'm getting a lot of these skin rashes everywhere. What's going on? Or when I get stressed out, I'm getting headaches. Right? There's different components of that. There's different muscular skeletal issues that can be there. But maybe it is a histamine piece that's going on. So stress is a big contributor to filling that bucket. Think in times of when you are stressed. All right, there's many other foods that contribute to this. And this is something that in functional medicine, we can help create that food palette for you. So, I mean, I just clinically see there's certain foods that chronically can cause more histamine flares than others. It's confusing. When you go online and you Google histamine intolerance and foods, you get a lot of information. There's histamine in almost every food out there. But it's knowing which foods are those triggers that can make it a little bit worse for you. That might be different than someone else down the street that's dealing with histamine. That's why it gets tricky. So fermented foods, aged foods, alcohol, nightshades, tomatoes, um, just to name a few, they contain high amounts of, of histamine. So think of a nice charcuterie board at a nice winery. That is all histamine foods right there. Think of a pizza. Think of a meat lover's pizza. Um, we got the tomato sauce, we got the cheeses, we got the, uh, the, the, the meats, the aged meats that are going on there. The only thing that really isn't technically histamine is the gluten crust. And you know what? How many people react to gluten? <laughs> a lot. So you're probably reacting to the gluten, maybe on top of the dairy, and then the dairy on top of that, the histamine of the dairy, you know, and these other foods. So many people don't feel the greatest when they have alcohol, when they have these different types of foods. So if you notice that after you eat, you get some weird symptoms, okay, let's start Let's start logging that. Let's start thinking about that. What, what could be cause that? Now, deficiencies in different nutrients can also contribute to poor gut health and a histamine response. So if your digestive tract is not working in beautiful order, if we're not digesting things and breaking it up, we're not absorbing things, taking it in, we're not going to get these nutrients. They're not going to come in. So our megas, zinc, vitamin A, C, and E from our foods that we eat are needed to calm the mast cell down. Um, and it's not going to happen if we have a bad leaky gut. So this is where functional medicine shines because we help rebuild that. We help rebuild the tissue so we can conquer that histamine response that might be triggered from a gut um, issue. Then the last thing here is the histamine response become disrupted when estrogen and progesterone are out of balance. That is the case. I see it frequently that when we're dealing especially with women, we may have cycles of estrogen that go up and progesterone that impact how we're handling histamine. So you may be reacting to certain foods different times of your month, different times of your cycle. Maybe mid-cycle, wow, I cannot tolerate avocados. That's another histamine food. Or eggs, I know, another histamine food. Or chocolate, I know, another one. But Maybe right after your period, oh, wow, I can eat eggs and chocolate and, and uh, um, have a glass of wine all in one day. So it doesn't make sense. So you got to keep in, in, in mind, okay, what's happening in, in relation to my cycle as well? Because hormones alone can really aggravate more of a histamine response. The one thing that's not on this page is the genetic factor. So there's certain genetics that are predisposing people to having a dirty histamine pathway that might not clear the best. So DAO enzyme, um, as well as um, ALDH, are some specific genes that can inhibit the histamine to be cleared. So consider maybe even looking into some genetic tests, like Stratagene uh, by, by Seeking Health by Dr. Ben Lynch. Phenomenal test to do uh, to assess the genetics, to see what is going on that uh, we maybe need to, to support things a little bit differently that way. Okay, here's some other sources of histamine here. Um, some foods that contain histamine. We talked about the fermented foods, alcohol, cured meats, more, right? This is a beer and pizza night. Indirect, so some lifestyle factors can cause a greater release of the histamine, like the stress, the nutrient deficiencies, the hormonal imbalance, the meds that you might be on that can really impact the, the, the indirect sources of histamine that is making your bucket full. So this is also a really nice sheet that shows which foods we may want to avoid, which foods we may want to limit, and one thing in foods that we want to definitely include because they're known to have more antihistaminic properties to them. So I can have this document for you as well.
ask me for it. Here are, how can you support healthy histamine levels through your diet? Here we go. We're going to avoid these things. Um, the, the foods contain high amounts of histamine. So we got the cheeses, the alcohol, soured foods, smoked meats and fish, leftover. So if you make something and you keep it in the refrigerator for a long time, that's fermenting, that's rotting, that's causing more histamine to happen. Think of the buzzards outside. <laughs> um, it's really interesting when you dig into the science behind this because when you have the roadkill on the side of the road, the, the buzzards, the um, birds, the vultures will go out there and eat that putrefication of the meat. And it's actually called uh, putramines. Like they are actually <laughs> in the component of histamine tolerance um, and intolerance and it degrades it. So we need to make sure that anything rotting and fermenting is, is well, that's producing a, an amine. And amine, this particular one is called a histamine one. So shellfish, spinach, teas even, kombucha, uh, dried fruits, vinegar, nightshades, avocados. Some of these foods you're like, oh my gosh, I eat a lot of these things. So we got to probably need to look at working some of these out. These things are our limited ones that I sometimes do see spike people with histamine intolerance. Always alcohol. If there's anything that, I mean, I would put that on the red list. I don't know why it's on the yellow list, but bananas, <laughs> tomatoes, beans, papaya, citrus fruits, pineapples, uh, the chocolate, the nuts, nuts, nut bars, kind bars. I mean, these can be really good and healthy for us, a better choice than something else. But if we have a histamine intolerance to nuts, you know, maybe that's aggravating you a little bit more. All right, these are some things to include. We want fresh meats and fish. Fresh is the key word, not meats that have been fermenting and rotting um, for a while. Non-citrus fruits. So think blueberries, think blackberries, okay? Uh, Non-dairy milk, uh, non-dairy milk alternatives, fresh vegetables, except those tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, avocados, and spinach, right? Ginger, eggs, sometimes I see eggs uh, irritated, so just be aware of those eggs. Turmeric, coconut oil, garlic, onions, chamomile, olive oil. Olive oil is really nice. Black rice and peppermint are good things to keep in there for you. Certain herbs can help too. And here's just a few of them that are uh, noted in the literature, the scientific literature to help limit histamine activity, which is quercetin, butterbur, mango seed, stinging nettle, and turmeric in there. So um, these extracts can support the body in relation to the environmental triggers. We have quercetin inhibits the histamine production. Um, it exhibits antiviral properties, regulates the immune response, and reduces airway inflammation. So this is something that really has been shown in the research, um, even with COVID. I know there's some talk about quercetin being limited by the FDA, uh, or that was NACL. NACL. That might have been NAC. I think that was NAC. They're kind of similar, but quercetin. My goodness, think about how much that would handle COVID, um, immune responses, or I don't know if I'm legal able to say that, so don't type in COVID on here <laughs> this video. I'll get flagged. Okay, so we have butterbur, which is reduces nasal irritation. So that's going to be like something really nice and smooth. smooth. Uh, airway reduces airway restriction again, reduces inflammation signaling. So that's what the, the extract looks like. Mangosteen reduces airway inflammation again, ginger. Um, and so those, those things are really going to target like the breathing pathways, but there's some of the things that are triggered too with histamine, uh, like the digestive piece, um, and the skin with that. So ginger is a great addition to a tea, uh, to some foods, to some cooking that you might do to a smoothie you might want to do. Stinging nettle is also antioxidant and inhibits histamine activity. Turmeric regulates immune response reduces lung inflammation. It's a great anti-inflammatory. So what else can you do to hit lower the histamine load here? You can eat a diet rich in diverse plant fibers that you can tolerate if you can tolerate them. You incorporate stress reduction techniques. Seriously, meditate, pray. Um, do some apps on your phone that might gives you like five minutes during the day just to kind of just peace out and get in tune with yourself. Um, maybe there's other ways that you can find to reduce your stress. Bring in some exercise that can also be helpful for you. Get adequate sleep. Work with me to manage hormone levels that may be contributing to your symptoms. So definitely we'd be looking at certain tests like the Dutch hormone test to see what's going on and assessing estrogen versus progesterone levels. And also work with me to determine if a loss of gut integrity 
is playing a role in how your body reacts to environmental triggers. The last thing that's not on here that I would add is work with me to determine if your genetics are also going to contribute to your inability to process the histamine in your body. So here's a little quiz as we almost finish up here. Are you at risk of high histamine load here? So you can determine if this might, if you might benefit from lowering your histamine load if you answer yes to any of these questions. So when exposed, here we go, number one, when exposed to environmental triggers or high histamine foods, do you experience symptoms such as rashes, skin irritation, runny nose, nasal congestion, fatigue, or digestive issues? Yes, no. Are you regularly subjected to heavy emotional or physical stress? Who isn't? <laughs> Three, do you regularly consume bread, cold cuts, spinach, aged cheeses, or other foods containing high levels of histamine? I'd also say alcohol if that is, well, hold on. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's four. So do you? Number four, do you regularly consume alcohol, chocolate, bananas, tomatoes, or other foods that can trigger the release of histamine? When I say tomatoes, think of like pasta sauces. Think of like some wine and some pasta out. Um, have you been told by your healthcare provider that you have gut gut permeability issues like leaky gut have you been told that or maybe even thought that you might have because you might have histamine intolerance that we need to iron out for you so excess histamine or even an, an intolerance to histamine and the associated inflammation can cause areas that I can help with like the general evaluation dietary recommendations lifestyle recommendations nutritional support this is where we come in and we rebuild the body rebuild the tissue okay and this is what functional medicine does so I hope this was helpful for you in your quest for learning more on histamine intolerance.